All right, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Shotcut Video Editor. This is aimed for beginners, people that are looking to get a good overview of how to use this program. So when you first open Shotcut, it's going to look more like this, but let's say it looks like that. There's no more timeline. Well, I could go up here to where it says Timeline and click this, and there it is. Or let's say there is no Properties window or Playlist window. Well, I can click Properties up here and playlist up here and now they're back. So that's how you get windows added to this that are missing. Now speaking of these windows, the playlist window is where you add your clips. So let's go find some clips and you drag them over here. I'll turn into a little plus and then you drop it in and the clip's going to start playing in the source window. I'm going to add another clip. Grab the clip, make sure it has a little plus and then you let it go and now it's playing right here. Now the space bar will play and stop the clip. L will play the clip, and if you hit L a couple of times, it will fast forward through the clip. Now I hit K to stop, I'll hit I for in, L for play, and now we're playing the clip, and I will hit K to stop, O for out, and I can grab this clip and I can drag it into the timeline right here. And now if I play this clip, we're playing from the timeline. You see right here it says project. Now if I go to the source tab, we're playing back from the source clip again. I can double click this clip right here and I can hit L a couple times and maybe fast forward through the clip. You know, I got this shot of this seagull or perhaps another seagull. Yeah, that's a nice one. So I'll hit I for in right there. I'll, you know, L plays the clip, play it for a few seconds. It's kind of nipping at the air. We'll hit K for stop, O for out. Grab the clip, drag it to the timeline, and now we have two clips. I can click and drag it, and I'll drag it next to this one. Let's just say for a moment that I want two tracks. I can click right here, and I can add another video track. I can grab the clip, drag it up there. Now we have a clip on two tracks. Let's say I want to trim this clip and make it a bit longer. Well, I can click right here and just drag out. Now the clip's longer. Let's say I want to cut the clip into two. Well, click the clip and click this right here. Now it's cut into two separate clips. Now, you may have noticed when I was trimming the clip, you have this little circle thing right here. Well, if I click this and drag, that little circle thing will fade the clip out. Isn't that pretty cool, huh? Now, when you're trimming the clip, you also have this little magnet icon. See, if I grab this clip and trim it, it will snap to the timeline because of the magnet icon. But if I turn this off and trim the clip, it will no longer snap to the timeline. I like it to snap to the timeline, so I turn the magnet clip on. Now, let's say, for instance, that I want to put a transition between these two clips right here. I want a nice transition. I'm going to grab, grab this clip. I'll put it on the same track as this one. And you can put the, play, the uh, playhead over here, say, and then grab this clip and simply, you know, put them together. And now you have a transition. Isn't that something? I'm going to go right here, and I'm going to zoom in a bit. And if I click on this transition and click on the Properties tab, I can change this from a Dissolve to any number of things. Um, how about a Barn Door? Haven't heard of that one before. Let's say this transition isn't long enough. Well, I'll grab this and I'll drag out and drag this way too. And I can have a super long transition. Nice and slow. See that? Now let's say... I want to see more of the timeline. This is kind of cramped. Well, I'm going to click this right here, this little toggle, and I'm going to drag up. And now I have this great big timeline right here. You know, let's say I don't want the audio for this clip right here. Well, I can right click on this clip and choose Detach Audio. And with the audio detached, I can edit the audio separately from the video, or I can click it and just delete it. I can go over here detach this audio by right clicking and choosing detach audio. I can click right here and I can drag, well let's put the timeline over here. Click this and drag to the timeline and now I just have one continuous audio track for this clip. Speaking of the audio, let's just say, I'm going to turn this up for a minute, 
Let's say I don't want it to have all these loud and quiet spots. Let's play this for a second. Keep an eye on this. This is down here. It's going to bounce around. I want it to sound nice and smooth. So I'm going to click this clip right here, the audio. And I'm going to go to filters. And I'm going to click the little plus button. And we have all the filters here. We have video filters and we have audio filters. Well, I want the audio filters. So I'm going to go down and find the limiter filter, my favorite one. Now limit zero decibels. If I bring this down to negative um, two, then the loudest parts of this clip will never get above negative 1.9. And just so you know, if it goes above zero, it's over modulated, so you want it at negative. I can take the gain and bring the gain way up. That's going to increase the gain on the quiet parts. So the quiet parts are going to get louder, and the loud parts will get softer and stay at 1.9, negative 1.9 or below. So it makes the audio sound more consistent. Let's play it. And you can see this meter is hardly even moving. Now if I brought the gain on the loud parts down more and brought the gain on the quiet parts up even more, there might be very little difference in the audio from one part to the next. So that is my favorite filter for the audio. It's pretty much the only one I use, in fact. I'm going to turn this way down again so I don't annoy the crap out of you. Okay, now let's say this clip here, let's say I want to lower the audio or raise the audio, but I don't want to use the limit filter. Well, I'll just click on this clip right here, go to the filters tab, hit the plus button, go to the audio section, and I believe there's one called gain volume. Well, this just lets you raise or lower the decibel level. See that? You can raise it up here. Now, now it's over modulated. You can see it's bouncing in the red. Or I can just you know, raise it a little bit or, or even make it quieter. Okay, let's see. What else do I need to show you? Oh, yes. Let's keyframe some effects. So I'm going to click this clip. I'll go back to filters, click the plus button, go to the video effects. And I will, I will find, I usually like to do the color. I just like keyframing color. So click, click uh, color grading. You know, we have the little color wheel, so I'm going to bring this in. I want this to be a bit bigger, kind of smushing the, uh, let's bring this guy over here. So you can drag these around by messing with these little toggles. And I'll make the timeline a bit smaller. It appears to be a little bit off-centered for the timeline, but that's okay. So now I'm going to... And I can mess with these uh, settings right here, and I can just change stuff around a little bit. See that? You know, I, I can make them kind of red. But uh, what's cool about this effect is if you see these little clocks right here, this if you enable these, then you're enabling keyframing. So I can keyframe all of these, and you'll notice that I now have two separate um, timelines right here. This is for keyframes, and this is the original timeline. Sometimes this will appear below the original timeline, but right here, probably because of the size of the windows, it appeared next to it. But if I take the timeline and put it in a different part of the clip and I change these, a keyframe will automatically be added. See, I just moved the highlights, so a keyframe is added right there. And if I move the shadows, a keyframe will be added for the shadows. Put this over here, move the midtones, and now a keyframe is added for the midtones. You can zoom in on this. You can take these keyframes, you can drag them around. You can right click and hit remove. You can right click and change the type and make it smoother if you wanted to. See that? So that's how you keyframe effects right there. And let's just, you know, for shits and giggles, let's click on this again. And let's click plus and I don't know. Maybe do another um, keyframe effect. Sorry, I'm on the one audio. You can keyframe the audio ones too. I don't know if mask is keyframeable. Some of them aren't. Uh, so, but this one is. So it has a little icon. So you click these, 
And now I can keyframe the mask. So let's say horizontal. I'm not quite sure what this is even going to do. I don't know what it's doing. Shape, rectangle. Well, it appears not to be doing anything, but one important point I want to show you is if, see now this right here is, is the mask keyframes, okay? Now if I went back to the clip and I clicked up here, color grading, this will turn into the color grading keyframes. Now the, the audio has, does not have keyframes on this. But anything that has keyframes will pop up when I click on the effect. You see that? So that's how you edit the keyframes for the different effects. So I don't want to mess with the keyframes anymore. So I'm going to click the X and just get rid of the keyframes window. And now I have my keyframe clip right here. That's kind of funky looking. Look at that. It's a cool clip. And it fades to black. Just like any cool clip would. But that's, uh, you know, that's about all I wanted to show you. As a matter of fact, let's, um, you know, let's export this, in fact. You know, there's no tutorials complete without exporting. So you click export right here. Now you have another tab for export. Well, you can click on what you want. I usually leave these, these the same because this automatically picks the size of the video for you, including the frame rate. You can put this on, you know, best if you want. Um, I usually do MP4. That works well for YouTube. Kodak. I leave that the same quality. You can put your quality at 80 or so. Um, audio, don't, no need to change any of that. You just hit export file, give it a name and select the location, select save and it'll have a little dialog box right there, saving the project. And to save the project, in fact, you can just click file and save as, and it's just like any other program. But anyway, that's the shortcut video editor for the time being, my first tutorial on it. But uh, stay tuned for more tutorials. Thanks for watching.